Hi, I'm Simon Chen from MBC Technology, and today I'd like to give a short introduction to uh, Linker Recession in LD. So we at MD are a founding member of the RISPI Foundation, and also a contributor to the RISPI's open source ecosystem. We have been working on RISPI's for in the event Linker LD, including recession for a number of years and we'd like to share what we have done so far and also contribute our work back to the open source community. So what's the current session? To illustrate that we will start with an example here. This is the C call where we define a main function and inside this main function we call another function foo. This foo function is defined externally outside of this file translation unit. So we cannot see its definition here. Next, what happens if we as a compiler to compile this file? Uh, we know that the compiler has to generate code to uh, invoke this full function, but uh, the compiler does not know where this function will be placed eventually. So to be on the safe side, the compiler will generate uh, code with the largest possible range here with an ARPG and the ZAR instruction. Then you also put the risk by call relocation here to tell the linker that uh, the linker should relocate the p update to full here at this time. Then as we try to link this object file with full defined in another object file, uh, the linker lays out the functions, computes the p offset, and then rewrites the call relocation here so far, so good, right? Um, however, we can see that uh, this offset right here is only uh, 125 the path. And this is where we see the range of reach by jump and link instruction. So an optimized linker should be able to uh, rewrite this code sequence down to a, a single jump and link here, which uh, will save us one instruction and also four bytes here. So this animation to rewrite code sequence with shorter and more efficient ones is called uh, what we call linker recession. So the case of linker recession is that um, from the compiler's view, uh, since it only works on one translation unit at a time, uh, it has no information about the final layout of the function's data. So uh, it has to assume the worst case by generating uh, the most conservative instructions. And you can also emit a, emit a recession hint uh, to tell the linker that uh, it is possible to rewrite uh, this with a shorter code sequence. And then from the linker's point of view, uh, the linker has global information about the address of uh, all functions and the symbols uh, in the executable. So to perform recession, it simply has to check uh, each recession hint and then determines uh, if it's possible to um, replace the call sequence with a shorter one. Uh, so the philosophy here is that uh, the producer, the compiler in, in, in this case, uh, with less innovation, produce more uh, code lies more conservative and uh, the consumer or linker, in this case, uh, which has more information, can uh, then renew the extra bits uh, produced by the previous stage. So you may ask um, what kind of recession is by possible? The answer is that uh, there are actually many types, but we will look at the two types of recession below. Uh, the first kind of recession is called code recession. The compiler uses the call or tail pseudo instruction to call or tail call a subroutine. subroutine. Uh, this is spans to ARPC and ZLR instructions, which can address about two gigabytes in each direction. But this will uh, take on uh, eight bytes of space. If the jump range is within one megabyte, uh, we can release this to the jump and link instruction, which will save us uh, four bytes here. 
and if the compressed extension is available, we can further release uh, this into the compressed jump link or the compressed uh, unconditional jump, which only takes up two bytes. So this is a six byte saving over the original AYP pair here that uses eight bytes of space. The other kind of realization is the GP relative realization. Uh, so in this file, the API defines the X3 register as a dedicated global pointer register, which we call the GP. The value of this register is initialized to the symbol um, underscore global pointer dollar sign is double, and it remains unchanged during execution. So uh, this is this symbol is typically assigned to the uh, search and data plus a 2 kilobyte offset. This means that uh, any stored data placed in the data session can be addressed by uh, GP as the best register plus a 2 kilobyte offset. So <clears throat> here we have an example to load data from the simple thing using Louis and also uh, 12B displacement in, encoded in the uh, uh, immediate of the lower function. So let's say uh, this thing symbol is a small data and we uh, assign it to an address that is uh, somewhere close to the GP uh, pointer. So in this case, uh, this is a negative 700 um, byte from the GP. So we can change the uh, low wall instruction to use the GP uh, register as the base and then put the GP reality offset into the immediate. So now um, the address of sync is calculated by the low wall instruction itself and the list rule instruction is now uh, redundant. So the linker is now safe to uh, remove this rule instruction. This um, prohibits a uh, four bytes of saving uh, by deleting uh, this GUI and also uh, leaves us with uh, only a single instruction to load the data. So, so far, we have described two kinds of realization in RISC-V, and uh, uh, realization in RISC-V also introduces a new kind of issue regarding to alignment handling. Uh, we will walk through this with another example here. Uh, this is the uh, previous code. So we already know that uh, these two instructions may be relating to a single one. And the these two instructions are followed by an alignment field here that says the uh, next instruction at I here should be A by aligned. And when we assemble this into the second core fragment here right now, uh, the assembly system of this AI is already a by light, right? So it does not try to add uh, any padding between the lower and the AI. And the problem now comes when the linker uh, relates these two instructions into a single one. And now this AI instruction is no longer a by light. And as far as the linker says, uh, right now it has no way to know. Uh, or and no way to uh, fix this alignment. So to make alignment work uh, here uh, in, co in code compiled with uh, research enabled, each alignment directive is uh, paired with the worst possible bytes maps. So in this case, uh, this is a A by alignment. So uh, actually six bytes of maps uh, are needed here. And these maps are uh, also tagged with an, an alignment rotation here, which uh, hide the ball like in here. And uh, the link time, at the time, the linker uh, rest, uh, rest these two instructions into a single one, as usual. And then it has to process the, uh, the alignment things here. The, the link system all this is a uh, a by alignment so this a i needs to be a by a by light and it needs to keep uh, a four by uh, 
down here to keep this aligned. So we delete the extra two by some now here. Uh, so this has a very serious implication. So any other files compiled with realization enabled cannot be uh, linked by links not not do not support realization. Uh, since uh, as you can see, these update files here are naturally unaligned right now, and there is now the link responsibility to uh, handle the alignment. So back on LD, uh, the LVN linker. Uh, LD is a support here within LVN, and it is a drop uh, drop replacement for the glue linker. It is designed to be fast. And like the LVN, it has an embeddable architecture and also a permissive license. And by default, it's also a post target linker. And the risk file is also among the architecture supported by LD. Back in 2017, we first contributed uh, a patch to support a uh, best uh, risk file replacement to LD. And since then, many people have also contributed to uh, the risk file port. Uh, in LD. However, in uh, linker resolution is still not supported by LD yet, and unfortunately, this means that uh, LD for now cannot be used to link the majority of Rishby libraries that were compiled with uh, uh, resolution. Uh, this is due to the missing alignment handling, uh, as we mentioned above. So this has uh, seriously limited the usefulness of LD in risk by soft, uh, software ecosystem. And in April this year, we posted a proof of concept patch for review. Uh, and this fully implements the all kinds of realization and uh, also alignment handling uh, in risk by. Right now, this is under early review. And we are still looking for comments and the feedbacks for this patch. And in the remaining session, uh, we will uh, briefly discuss uh, what this patch does. So to start, we will uh, first take a very high level overview of how LD works. Uh, so LD has to first uh, pass the into files and uh, add the symbols in these files into a symbol table and also resolves any undefined symbol, uh, symbols in these files. Next, it has to scan for location in uh, each session to determine uh, if the, uh, it needs to generate things like the global offset table or maybe primary locations. Then it lays out uh, each session and it computes the edges of the symbols and they use this layout to perform locations uh, on the input sessions, and finally writes out the uh, SQL to the output file. So to add a uh, realization support in LD, uh, since, since realization needs to uh, work on uh, temporary assigned symbol addresses, so it seems more nature to add a realization pass uh, right after sessions have been laid out, but before uh, the session contents have been uh, relocated. And the first problem we encounter when adding resolution uh, support to LD is that uh, it needs to modify the input sessions, uh, including the contents and the symbols and the rotations. So we have to add some infrastructure to support these uh, this kinds of operations. In LD, the impositions by default are memory mapped from the input files uh, directly. So uh, we have to add a mutable data function to uh, make a writable copy of that content that we can play with. Uh, the next thing is that we have to add a new function to delete the instructions in the sessions, uh, which will uh, move the session content and uh, just the uh, uh, real patient and the uh, symbol access, and then reduce the size of the session. Uh, in the implementation, we have to pre-sort uh, the upset of uh, uh, all the range symbols and the locations to ensure that uh, 
the solution uh, works in linear time. So to perform the session, uh, we check for each input session that is uh, executable. And within those sessions, we search for the uh, recession hint. In this file, the recession hint is inserted right after the rotation that it is assigned to. So we look at the previous rotation to see uh, if that rotation can be resisted. And we also need to uh, keep a mapping during the session uh where the instructions that needs to be deleted has to be recorded and then remove all plan in a single pass at the end of the session so next let's see how and when we can raise this kind of relocation to raise a code location we have to compute the upside between the caller and the calling but since after each resolution pass uh uh, the text section may be uh, reduced and the list offset may also be changed as a result. So we have to make some assumption about this offset. Um, in this case, we assume the, the offset can only become smaller as uh, the, set, uh, the text section are tightly dated out. And in addition, we also have to account for the uh, worst case session alignment, which may also enlarge this offset if the uh, caller and the callee are in different uh, sessions. We use this uh, worst case offset to determine uh, which kind of jump instruction we can convert a call to the instruction into. So this may be a jump link or maybe uh, the compressed jump instructions. And for high frequency and low curve locations, uh, we only relate frequency to data by uh, converting them to GP relative addressing. Uh, this needs to get the address of the global pointer and also compute the offset between the simple and the GP. Here we assume that uh, after each relaxation pass, uh, the GP relative offset does not change since uh, uh, the relaxation pass only affects the call sessions and not a data sessions. And if converting to GP relative addressing is possible, uh, we change the RS1 in the low uh, 12 instruction to GP and then also delete the corresponding loop. And for PC relative high 20 and low 12, we also only relate references to data by converting them to GP relative. So these are actually very similar to the previous uh, obsolete versions. However, in this file, the feature of low 12 uh, is linked to the feature of uh, high 20. So we have to split the resolution into uh, two passes. Uh, the first pass deals with the feature of the low uh, 12, and the second pass uh, deletes the feature of high 20. Let's make sure that we don't uh, release the high 20 first and then causes the lookup from the low 12 to fail. So recession is an iterative process. Since after one uh, pass of recession, uh, it reduces the call size, right? So this may enable further recession to occur. So the linker will iterative, uh, iteratively relax until no more changes can be made. This is guaranteed to convert since uh, recession only works in one way by shortening your code sequences. And after all recessions are finished, uh, we have uh, close to the final layer of the executable. And then at this time, uh, we can start handling the, the alignment rotations. This is a pretty straightforward process. Uh, since each, uh, each alignment point is already paid by the maximum possible bison maps. So the linker only has to uh, check uh, how many bison maps it needs to keep and how many bison maps it, need, it needs to delete and uh, remove the extra bytes here. One thing to note here is that uh, the alignment process must always be performed even if uh, 
it is disabled by the no re no resident option. Uh, this is to ensure that the alignment is always correct. As we mentioned earlier, that after files are now uh, naturally online, and it's now the linker responsibility to uh, ensure the, the alignment. So to verify the effectiveness of the session, uh, we run the uh, recession enabled LD and uh, also the glue linker uh, couple benchmark. This is the call size re uh, reduction of the benchmark gain and also show up benchmark uh, from both linkers. The baseline here is the original LD uh, with recession disabled. So as you can see here, the recession information of LD is as effective as the glue linker. And uh, in geometry mean, it can reduce about 3.2 percent of the extra size compared to LD uh, without recession. So for now, we have presented the uh, um, implementation of uh, linker recession in LD. Uh, we hope to hear more reviews and the feedbacks about the design and the implementation. And as for future work, we still have to. Uh, work on making emitting relocations, uh, work on the regs, and also add the missing uh, three local storage recessions in this file. So in the end, we hope to make uh, LD a uh, production quality linker for this file, where uh, it will eventually be used by uh, many projects. So thank you very much.